Would you like me to teach you how to make this pie? Stay tuned. Are you ready? <laughs> I think I'm ready. Okay. Hi, this is Saz from GNAT TV. Today we're in the studio. We're at the kitchen set and we're talking with Martha Thompson. <laughs> who showed us a terrific pie in the beginning and is going to show us how to make that. But before you start, why are you here today making terrific pies? I'm here today making terrific pies. We hope they're terrific pies because I'm a member of the Neighbor to Neighbor Steering Committee and the Steering Committee is planning to have a pie auction next Sunday at the Burn Burton Academy in the cafeteria and all of you are invited to come. And why you should come. First of all, there's a wonderful selection of pies. We have many, many pie bakers who have really put their best foot forward to make a delicious pie. Also, it's to support an amazing project that goes on in this Northshire to help senior citizens and housebound folks stay in their own home, have social opportunities. Uh, be supported by the rest of the community, people who are able. So that's the whole point of this pie auction because we have to raise the money so we can continue to offer these services. Is there like 10, 15 pies? I mean... Oh, we have over, a, we have about 100 pies. You are kidding. No, we have 100 pies. It seems amazing <laughs> that, you, that that many oh people... Oh my! And they're all different kinds. They're not just apple like what we're going to be making today. They are uh, cream pies and lemon pies and fruit pies of all kinds of pear could, cranberry. Could Gilligan's pie be there perhaps, perchance? Who, who, what kind Gilligan's? of pie? I don't know what's a Gilligan's pie. Uh, Gilligan's Island, didn't he do a coconut cream? Oh, I bet he did. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I don't. I think that there what it is was. going to be a coconut pie there, as a matter of fact. There could very well be a pie there. Very well. Maybe we won't call it Gilligan's pie. Though. Let's play it safe. There's probably copyright issues. <laughs> right. All right. So, um, what we're going to do is you're going to teach us how to make that terrific-looking pie. Is Absolutely. that the, is that the plan? That's my plan. I think I have it down pat, so that you can make go home and make an apple pie after this. Okay, here we go. You tell me anything I need to do. I will. For right now, you okay. can just sit Shut there up. and Is that watch. What you're <laughs> just watch okay. and, and listen. All right, I'm If ready. you're going to go home and make this, okay. Uh, the first thing you need to do is have a recipe for a pie crust. And there's an old-fashioned recipe, which is three cups flour to one cup of shortening. The recipe that I'm using is similar to that, but not exactly. It's from a cookbook called the Ina Garten Family Cookbook or Barefoot Contessa. And her recipe says uh, three cups of flour, 12 tablespoons of butter, a third of a cup of Crisco, a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of sugar. And you blend that in your Cuisinart about six pulses. Then you add a half a cup of water a little bit at a time. And you can substitute a little bit of vodka mm, for the water because it doesn't, it evaporates more quickly and helps make a crisper pie. I didn't happen to have vodka, oh, or sure. I only had orange flavored oh, sure. vodka, so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't use it. But I put a tablespoon of vinegar, which is an old Vermont trip. Uh, tip that I learned is a tablespoon of vinegar helps sharpen the flavor of the pie crust and improve the quality Got of it. it. So Fascinating. I made that crust, rolled it out. Can I ask you a quick question? Of course. Does it, it so I can just make it roll? It's not like bread where I have to chill it for a while. I could just well, do actually, it? you do have to chill it. You take it, and uh, this recipe makes two crusts, so you separate the ball into two parts and make two discs that Got you it. flatten out, wrap them up, put them in the refrigerator for at least half an hour. Half an hour, okay. They can actually be frozen and put aside for another day if you wanted. Then you would have to take them out and uh, thaw them out a little bit. So. so if I'm making a pie crust, why not make another for another day at the same time? Yes, exactly. Ah. Especially if it's just a one crust pie, then you're one step ahead. Got it. I roll it up on a pie, uh, a rolling pin, and gently roll it into the pan. 
and uh, then trim the edges. And you want to leave a good edge on the pie because your top crust is going to go under the edges and you want to have a little edge to put it under. So this, uh, you don't want to pinch this down too hard. This no. just needs to be flappy. This needs to be floppy. That's Got a it. good word. Got I it. like that. Okay. So, okay, hand right. me the apples. apples. And this trick with this, you're going to show them in a second because uh, you're going to do it with that, When I'm going to put the top right? on, yes. Okay, so I... hang on. She's going to show you that. Okay. All right. All right, so next, you well, to, actually, why don't do you, you do me? that? That yeah, would be why? lovely. Yeah, but what if I make a mess? Well, then we'll just put them in. We'll pretend we're Julia Childs, and we'll just put them right back in. And <laughs> She'll see. just roll her eyes at me. <laughs> yes. Let me ask you a question. So I gave you like a slotted spoon, but there's juice here. Do you want just the apples sort of juicified, or do you want the juice and the apples? We're going to have the juice and the apples, right, so, so you'll have to tip the bowl all right, so. and do beautiful. <laughs> now, in this mixture of apples, we have a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. We have a couple of tablespoons of flour, because the juice is, you don't want them to get away from you. There's about a cup and a quarter of sugar a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Although, sometimes I just sprinkle on the top, and I'm not entirely sure how much there actually is. So, it may be more or less than a teaspoon and the, of the nutmeg. And um, one. It's not that I can't do two things at once, but while you were talking, how, did you say how many apples I would have to cut? Oh, yes. There were, there's, uh, this is eight apples. Eight apples. You okay. need about four cups. Actually, now I'm looking at it. I wish I peeled maybe one or two more apples, but no, this is this gets the point across for yes, sure. Yes, right. right. So, and I used a mixture of Cortlands and uh, Max because they have Max have such a nice flavor, but Cortlands hold their shape. And I'll show you how thick, about how thick I cut my apples. Right. I don't want them too thick because then they don't cook up in the shell, and you've got solid. You've got a kind of a crunchy apple and I don't like that although I think some people do but so the thicker you make the apple the more crunchy effect you can have in your yes, pie exactly so it's sort of to taste exactly exactly and, and these apples hold up better in cooking than I don't know yeah Cortland's hold up better the than uh, uh, other kinds galas or empires but I used a mixture of Max and Cortland's because gotcha. Max have a wonderful flavor and I pour the rest of this you in there? You may do that. You may do that. And here, I'm supposed to do it towards the camera, but I can't. Okay, here. What um, if I finish that up for you? <gasps> fingers. Have you ever, um, fingers. Fingers. <laughs> have you ever used, like, native green apples on an apple tree in your backyard? Yes, absolutely. What's that experience like? They're very good, but you want to use plenty of sugar, and you probably don't need to use the lemon juice because they're very tart. And you're adding lemon juice to help keep the apples from browning up too much, but you're also adding right. the lemon juice to give a more complex flavor to the pie. Can I also freeze apples? You or? can. You can. You can. So I could. I could also do yes. all this work and and then take half and stick in the freezer yes. too. Yes. You you're not do just that. being nice to me. No, I'm not okay. just being nice to all you. Right. I'm actually thinking. Years and years ago, I worked on a reading as fundamental dinner. And we got together at a woman in town who probably a lot of people know, Brenda Madcore, and we froze the apples, and she made the pie crusts. And so we did freeze the apples. And I would worked. not have thought of it before, but it did. It worked out fine. And the app pies were wonderful. All right. So <laughs> Back to work. We need the, the butter. The butter. I'm, right, I'm on it. <laughs> and I'll take that little knife that's to the your knife. there, and we'll use that. We want to put the butter on top of the pie. It gives it a richness. Look, this is not a diet meal, I have to say. So we're going to use the things that will make this pie Actually, taste good. Actually, we were talking about this earlier, and it looks like butter maybe isn't the boogeyman we all thought it was. That's right. See, so you don't feel bad about it. May it may actually help you lose weight. Yes, right. And everybody needs a certain amount of fat in their diet every day. But we're not doctors. We've only played them on TV. <laughs> Is that true? Just say that. 
The next step is putting the top on this pie. Right, and that's sort of where I don't touch anything because that's really scary to me. Uh, okay, okay. I mean, so as you can see, I've already cut the little hearts out. Yeah, it's really beautiful. There are so many things you could do though. You don't have to use a heart thing. Some people just make a slash with little marks beside of it or you can actually cut out the picture of an apple in the center and put some crisscrosses around the edges. The point is to let some of the air come out because the pie, if you've sealed it carefully, could pop off a few. I'm not sure it would ever really do that. Now I did have a little trouble with this. Do you want me to do anything? Do you want me to support? Oh man, see this is why I don't want to touch this. This is like if I were to screw this up right now, the entire pie episode would die no, no, no. in my hand. No, and that's you'd never not right. Forgive me. No, Hoss. <laughs> we would fix it. We would we would just go mm, and stick it together and make it work. So don't d despair. Don't give up on your pie. All right. You've worked okay. hard. Look how much work has been done already. Oh man. And, and Robin, are we getting all that in the shot? Yes. Okay, cool. Wow. Here, let's slide that over. Wow. Oh, so there we go. <laughs> Successfully. <laughs> when it started to tear, I had a little nervous feeling, but, but it's okay. We're good. So now we're going to press down around the edges, and then I'm going to take the knife. Should I let Hoss do this, or should I do it myself? How about we pretended like we practiced and you said no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess. Like, <laughs> well, you'll you'll go home and you'll practice this yourself. So I'm going to cut out around the edges, and I'm going to cut it a little wider than the bottom crust because we're going to turn this under. Right, because you said we have to flip it under. Yes, we have to to seal the edge, and that's how you get your pretty crimped edge. You can just take a fork and do along the edges and, and then, then just and squeeze them together with the fork and then just trim away the edge. Okay. And that would be perhaps easier than trying to do the whole crimping kind of thing. Because that, but, well, it isn't, but it's fun But a real pie though. maker. Would look, would a look real down pie maker. Yes. <laughs> a real pie maker will probably crimp the Cross, edges. you are failed. <laughs> No, I would never do that oh, to I one of my you students. Say, you'd wait until I walked away and said, he used the fork. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, when I was a kid, isn't this kind of, yes. isn't this like cookie dough? Yeah, yes. Now, did your mom take it and roll it out? Yeah. And put butter and cinnamon sugar on it? Yes, and indeed. And roll it up? And some people leave it like that as a cinnamon whirl -a gig or they slice it and make like little cookies out of it. And it's a wonderful treat. And it's sort of okay. free. I'm going to begin the process of turning the edges under. Okay, so now <laughs> I've done all around the edges, so I'm going to start crimping it. How I do it, but different people have different methods. I take my thumbs in the front and oh, my this fingers. this isn't the crimp. Not this yet. Was just this is just getting it ready to be crimped. Oh, so you're okay. going to go like this and turn the, this thumb out and this thumb in. That almost oh, sounds next like a door. dance move. Ta -da, ta -da. Ta Are you ready, da, boss? Da, 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 da. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now I want you to try. I want you to see um, how you can do. Oh, it's going to be the ugliest pie. Oh, is it ugly? It isn't ugly. Look at what he's doing. You're going to be so proud of him. Hoss is going to have a new career. This is the pie where if I made it and submitted it, you know, you'd say, nah, nobody's done anything on this pie. I'm going to put down $3 <laughs> just to make him feel good. I, well, we have a bidding range. <laughs> yes, so. And you can't start with $3. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's make sure the camera let's make sure the camera sees the good side. Cool. <laughs> okay. There well, you go. I did that side. I did that side. <laughs> nice okay. job, Hoss. Okay. All right. So we, we're at this point. Is the oven preheating? Uh, the oven would be preheating because I would want to put it in at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. 
and then I would turn the oven down to 375 and finish it off. And then you want to start watching for, um, you want to see that there's like steam coming out. You actually want to see some action in there. You want it to, you want to know that it's cooking and that the flour is thickening up the juices. So now, here, Haas, see, he's such a good student, he's reminded me that I told him about the last step, which is this. I brush it with, actually milk is better, but I had only had cream, so we're going to brush it with the cream. You hear the Y coming on that, right? Oh, well, uh, if you just did it with milk, it would make a shiny crust. And some people like that finish, so you could just oh, end with that. Got it. But I'm putting the cream on so that I can sprinkle some sugar on top and it will stay, it will adhere to the crust. Oh, I see that I didn't get this on absolutely straight. But oh, it looks great. It really does. But I think it's going to be all right. Okay, and I'm dribbling here. And so it's, it's toward the, you've put it in for 15 minutes and now, now it kind of gets tricky after that because you really have to sort of Watch it. You do. You can't go off and leave it. The other thing I would do is, after it's been in the uh, in at 375 for about half an hour, I would start sticking a knife or a fork in to see if the apples are done because I like my apples to be all the way cooked. Right. But everybody doesn't, so it would be a personal thing. But you also want to make sure that the bottom of your crust is brown. Right. How do you do that? Well. You want to uh, cook it on the lower shelf in your oven, and then it will it is more likely to brown up evenly if you use it on the bottom shelf of your oven. So then we're going to take a little bit of sugar, really not a lot, and you just sprinkle it over the top. Are we there? We're there now. All right. Okay. Oh, oh yes, wait, Dad. The last thing. So this is fascinating. I this was really cool. Not everybody does this, and there are commercial products that you can use to put around your pie. But I usually use tin foil to put around my pie so that the t those edges, that scalloped edge, that's, uh, will not uh, get too brown. And after about 15 minutes before I think it's done, I take it off. The other thing you could always do is just take a piece of tin foil and put it over the whole top of the pie. And that would help lower the browning, if, especially if you're, if you're trying to get the apples done and they're not done. And right. you see that the top is browning too much. Yeah, just, put, just lay a piece of tin foil on top of it. You don't have to put it okay. down. You actually don't want to do that because you're going to... You want the crust to stay crisp. Yes. And if you fold it over too much, the crust won't stay crisp, and you want a crisp It'll crust. It'll steam itself. That's right. Exactly, right. exactly. So you can slow it down, but then you've got to get the thing off. Yes, for right. The final for right. the final... I have forgotten, and it's not the end of the world. It's just a very pale edge. That's all. <laughs> that's so. so, all right. So with everything working out perfectly, that's what you saw in the beginning. Yes. So there it's you really go. Beautiful. That's how to make a, an apple pie, or at least that's how I make an apple pie. But I think as you become more experienced, you add your own special little tips and tricks and things. So. She'd be great doing an apple pie show, or just a pie show in general here at GNAP. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, so remind us. Um, okay, so quickly give us the, the rundown of the event again. It's, it's going to happen in just a few days. It's in just in a few days. Don't forget about it. Don't miss it. It's going to be at Burn Burton Academy in the cafeteria. There's pretty good parking up there. And we have a wonderful assortment of pies made by some really, Many. some of the town's be, uh, amazing pie bakers, about 100 pies. So cool. So, and you can bid on them. We have a couple of other little things that would be interesting to you. There's going to be entertainment. You're going to be played to, guitar music to, during the time you're walking around trying to make your bids. And then at the end, when it's time to tally up everything. We have a special group. The barbecuers are going to be there to entertain you while the people are busy, busy, busy figuring out how many pies you bought. 
And it's so, all for a great cause, helping the community. Absolutely, absolutely. You do great work. It's a wonderful organization, and they do lots of wonderful things. And also, when you do it, you meet so many wonderful people. There's just so many great people out there that have wonderful stories to tell. And I think they like to be able to tell somebody their stories. So please consider Neighbor to Neighbor in any way. <laughs> financially or volunteering or coming to our event. Cool. Thank you so much for coming down to the studio. Oh, it was a treat. It was a pleasure to meet you, too. Thank you so much. <laughs>